This is the High School Football America podcast for February 20th, 2020. A lot of 20s in there. I'm Jeff Fisher. All right, it's that time of year when uh, all you people that come to HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com start looking for those out-of-state games. What are the big matchups? And uh, over the last, I think it's four years now, the gentleman on the line has been uh, having a big hand in bringing together some of the top-ranked matchups around the country as far as out-of-state games, those interstate games, if you will. He's Joe from Prep Gridiron Logistics. And, you know, Joe, I told you before I rolled tape here, I wasn't going to use your last name, and I'm not going to do it, but he's just known as Joe. He's not in the Witness Protection Program. He's not Madonna. He's not Cher. But he does know about putting high school football matchups together from uh, Prep Gridiron Logistics. So welcome to the show, Joe. Hey, Jeff, thanks for having me. And, you know, that's a Jersey thing. You, that's why you don't get it. Oh, uh, well, I'm a Pennsylvania guy. Don't go, don't go cracking on me. We, we, we got our stuff. We, we got some ways. But anyway, it's good to have you on the line here. Uh, you and I met uh, a couple of years ago down here when we uh, moved our base from uh, California to Atlanta. And I liked what you did. Uh, more importantly, I like that you kind of do this for the love of the sport. And we'll get into that in a second. But let's just kind of start with how things got uh, together for you uh, those three or four years ago. Prep Gridiron Logistics. Uh, you, you, I know you saw a need, so explain to the listeners out there what that need was and how you kind of stepped in and, and filled a hole. Well, I saw firsthand uh, my eldest son went to Don Bosco Prep in New Jersey, and I got to know their uh, athletic director very well. And he was talking to me how harder and harder it was getting for them to find games, especially. Um, you know, after winning the mythical national championships in 2009 and, and 2011. Um, so I said, Hey, can, can I help out? You know, I was in, I was in athletic administration in a prior life. Uh, I worked uh, at the college level for a few schools. Uh, I was on, I was a GA on coach Bowden staff at Florida state. So I knew people from around the country. So I was able to help Bosco a few times, uh, got him a home and home with Moeller Um uh, for their hundredth anniversary. Uh, I got them a game with a rumble from, uh, new Orleans. Uh, and I said, you know what, if, if the teams up here, you know, it wasn't only Bosco, Burden, Catholic, St. Joe's, they were all having the same problem. Uh, but I thought to myself, if these guys are having problems, I'm sure other privates around the country are, or have the same obstacles. Sure. Um, so i set up the website about three and a half, four years ago, prep gridiron com. And, and before you knew it, you know, as of today, we have over 300 uh, high school football programs signed up from around America, private and public. Um, they contact us when they need games. And, you know, we pride ourselves uh, within hours of giving them um, uh, the options they need based on uh, the logistics. It's amazing uh, the the need out there for this, and and what's even more amazing, and I kind of remember shaking my head when we were talking at that uh, that one event in Atlanta where we met that that you do this all for the love of the game. This is not you're not collecting cash on this, and we know there's some unscrupulous uh, promoters out there through the years and all that. So uh, that's amazing. I mean, uh, th- again, how, how much do you love the sport of high school football? Uh, th- that's how much I love it. I don't I don't think there's a pure game out there. Um, I do this, you know, I, I joked on another podcast that I consider myself the, the George Bailey of high school football. Um, so yeah, I, I do it because I want the kids, I want the players, the coaches, I want the, the families involved to have, to have these memories that otherwise wouldn't happen if it weren't for PGL. Um, so, you know, we, thank God we have this technology with the press of one button. If a school calls me up, uh, like this morning, I got a call from somebody looking for a game on August 28th. And with the press of one button, I let uh, the top 300 ADs and head coaches around the country based on uh, max preps uh, know that this team needs a, needs a game. This is the date uh, they, uh, they, they need to host, and this is the travel stipend uh, range they're looking to pay out. And within minutes, my email starts populating. The next thing you know, I'm sending options to the coach and literally, literally uh, what used to take weeks and months to do uh, takes now minutes and, and days. Yeah, no, it's 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 amazing what you're doing. By the way, throw High School Football America in there once or twice, too. Our algorithm's <laughs> been pretty darn good. Yeah, I, I love Zach yeah. and everybody at Max, but come on, give us a little prop there. But anyway. I, I get it. I get it. I, 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 ref, I reference both of you, and, and you, you know – 
You've been on uh, our sister site, PrepGridIron.com. You've been a guest on it, so we yeah, love you. I know. I'm just teasing you a little bit here, Joe, <laughs> from Prep Grid Iron Logistics. So uh, you, you you mentioned a, a team that you know reached out to you. They uh, may have been Hoover. They called me yesterday saying, hey, Jeff, can you promote it a little bit, uh, put it out on Twitter to see we need a game. But So how does that work then? Kind of take the, the, the listeners, and, and because we're so heavily coach-oriented and AD-oriented, take them through the, the list. Say if, if it was Hoover, and I think Hoover probably did reach out to you, how do you do that aside from pushing the button what ha- what happens beyond pushing that button once once the button is pushed what are the steps how how does it work well i, I have a, a questionnaire that internally as i'm uh speaking with the coaches or ad's i'm i'm filling in the blanks you know obviously the date uh can you are, are you willing to travel or can you is it can you only host um what's the travel stipend uh involved uh, you know, also some miscellaneous. There are some teams out there, uh, you know, I don't have to tell you, there are teams out there who will tell me, um, we don't want to play a private. Mm-hmm. We only want to play a public just like us where, where kids don't come from a region. We want a town team. You know, so it's very specialized. Um, and, and, and again, I started this service for privates. That's right. how it all started from, you know, up here in New Jersey with the power privates having a hard time finding out of conference games. Um, so, so we, you know, we, we can't, our primary goal originally was to cater to them, but when we opened up the floodgates, you know, literally I would say 60% of our clients are publics now. So, so I got to, you know, if, if there's a public in Alabama that wants to play another public uh, I have to ask him, do you want it to be from a, the, the other team to be from a border state? Do you want them, do you want it to be further away where the travel stipend is going to be a little higher? You know, the, the, the further bus ride a team has to travel, the higher the stipend, stipend needs to be. So, uh, you know, that's why you see a lot of bordering state games between Florida, Georgia, Alabama. These public schools don't have a, a, a lot of cash to dole out for somebody who comes from California right. or Maryland or the Seattle, Washington. So, so, you know, we need, we need to make it work for everything, everybody. And in the end we do. Um, and you know, like I said, uh, before, I mean, I do this as a labor of love. Um, I, I, I dedicate probably two and a half, three hours a day to it. Uh, and I, I get the job done right now. Most of it's through technology. So I could, I could do it anywhere. Um, so it, it, it's it become a routine now, and and uh, around this time of the year, uh, uh, we're needed uh, the most because we're crisis managers. A lot of teams, you know, things are ca- cancel unexpectedly. Uh, a coach leaves, and that coach um, doesn't. You know, the new coach doesn't want to play the team that they signed up to play a few months ago. So we got to tear up that contract and start over again. Uh, so we're crisis managers uh, the first quarter of, of every year. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. We're, uh, you know, we booked a boatload of games already uh, in, for 2020, but now we're, we're in the mode where we're trying to help clients uh, rectify their unfortunate situations at this time. Yeah, you're, uh, you're, you're doing a great job out there. Uh, Joe is uh, from Prep Gridiron Logistics. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, Hoover just dropped a game. That's where Joe kind of steps in. Uh, the Alabama Power looking for a game there at the, the end of August. But Joe, uh, I, I know uh, what people want to hear right now is what are some of the big games? I know you have a hand in bringing some of them together, and you told me before we rolled some tape here that you've put together kind of a, a, a top ten, if you will, of the, the big games that not not only are on the list, but you're looking forward to too, because you are a high school football fan. So why don't you go through it and uh, let the, the listeners out there and the fans know uh, some of the big matchups for 2020. Yeah, well, we'll go with the biggest. Um, you, you know, I don't have to tell you, me and you have argued over this in the past. <laughs> We've um, done that uh, once or twice. <laughs> yeah. We, you know, I, I personally feel that up until next season, Texas hasn't played an, enough quality out of state games. They've done it. Don't get me wrong. DeSoto IMG, you know, Gorman came down there, but on a, on a, on a routine basis mm-hmm. and, and playing the best that the, the sport has to offer. Um, well, 2020, that that's all changing. We got, uh, three Texas games, you know, four really that, that, uh, are going to take the high school football in, uh, uh, high school football, uh, a season uh, to, to, to great heights and levels. Um, Canton, Ohio, Nike, Nike and the NFL are, are holding an event. 
Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas is going to be playing Duncanville. Okay, I just got that confirmed yesterday Ooh. from uh, one of my D- Duncanville reps. Okay, um, Duncanville also this year will be hosting St. Francis. Wow. <laughs> um, in, yeah, in Houston, we have a doubleheader coming down the pipe, which I, I know you know about. Uh, De La Salle from Concord, California is going to be visiting host North Shore. Uh, and and the, the undercard of that doubleheader will be St. Joe's Prep out of Philly playing Shadow Creek. So we could talk about that first. I mean, th- Texas has never stepped up before like this in, in a season. And so many of us uh, who love the sport are, are so ha- happy that it's happening. It's a, a long time coming. And, and, you know, those of us that would, 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 get, would, would always knew Texas had great football. Um, the, the only um, um, negative we only had was, was this, that, that they, didn't, they didn't do what they're doing in 2020. And they shut us up really quick with, with this schedule, which is great. No, it is, and like you said, we've uh, we've had uh, friendly arguments about uh, that whole thing. And you know, from my perspective, you know, Texas is unto itself. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, especially as a guy that's running an algorithm, uh, you know, you, you you like to see with more and more of these, you know, interstate matchups. You know, it, it, there's a weight in there, and you got to make sure that you're playing the best of the best, and that's great. And I know Duncanville, and, and the, you know, you talked, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but Coach Samples down there, you know, he had he's one of those guys that has trouble scheduling non-district games in Texas. So it seems like, you know, uh, the only way for them to, to really do it, I guess, is to go out of state, right? Is that, is that basically the premise? Because I know you're tight yeah, with that. that's it. Yeah, I, um, you know, when I first started this company, I didn't have a team from Texas as a client. They just, you know, they, they, they didn't do it. They, 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 they didn't need it. They, they felt. And as teams like Duncanville did better and better, uh, and word got out about Prep Grid Island Logistics. Um, you know, we started. Duncanville was basically my first my first client. Mm-hmm. Um, I I sent uh, St. John's from D.C. down there last season um, to, to play in Duncanville. And the great thing is, you know, Texas has this mindset that um, now we do have to bring a team that's closer so they could bring more fans. And I keep telling them that's that's not how that's not the way to think. Last year with St. John's, when we brought them down to Duncanville, they only brought a couple of hundred fans, parents of the players, things like that. But the fact that Duncanville was playing St. John's, the, the, the local people came out to the tune of double the average attendance. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, no, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I... We had lines. There were lines at the ticket windows going into the third quarter of the game. Yeah, that's and 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 you know that and I, I what you said there is so critical because I believe that because the one thing about Texas that I know and having been to I think it was 2010 the first time I went to a state championship game there at AT and T they are fans first I mean first off they know their sport but they are fans so I agree with you they would show up to see some of these great teams from around the nation so you gave us some 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 biggies there with the Texas teams but I know there's some other ones out there that you like in your top ten so who else you, right, do you have right. Well, yeah, obviously, uh, this game uh, needs to happen every year. It was a great one last year. Uh, St. Francis will be visiting IMG, mm. which is a, a matchup of these two teams meet each other. They should be playing each other every, each and every year, no doubt. And I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, they will be this year. Uh, St. Francis also will be going to California to play Centennial. I love that one. In the Honor Bowl, right. So, no, it, you know, again, I, I love teams like Centennial, a power public who will play anybody. There are other power publics out there that call me and say, we don't want to play St. Francis, Modern Day, St. John Bosco, St. Thomas Aquinas. Centennial's like, the hell with that. Bring it on. You know, put us, put us in touch with anybody you want. So, yeah. and, and obviously that makes our job easier. Um, our mantra is um, play the best, anyone, anywhere. And uh, Centennial, uh, you know, is probably, in, in my opinion, the, the most courageous uh, power public out there. Oh, and, and one of the top programs, Matt Logan, is not only a class coach, he's a class guy. And, you know, the only thing there, and I don't know if that's changed since I've been out there, but Matt's biggest problem was as a public and, and uh, you know, budgets, he's got to stay in state, right? He can't travel, or they is that right, changed yeah. for them? No, I mean, he can travel, but it's got to be to a place, um, to, to a wealthy host. I mean, you know, a team like St. John's, IMG, um, 
you know, they, they could, they could bring anybody in, anybody in they want. Money's not, not an object there. Uh, you know, if a team asks for, you know, 20 grand, they're going to get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, if, if those teams, those teams are few and far between those wealthy ones who, who, who can play the, pay the high travel stipends. So he is limited um, to that region where he could bus somewhere uh, and, and not have to, you know, give up or, or uh, you know, a five, a five figure travel stipend. Yeah, no, it, it makes it tough. Uh, Joe from Prep Gridiron Logistics on the line talking 2020 out-of-state high school football games, and you mentioned St. Francis there. And, you know, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, had a real problem a couple of years ago when their league, the uh, MIAA, decided that uh, nobody in the league wanted to play them, and that left them up a creek, we'll just say, without that proverbial paddle. And I know you kind of stepped in there. So what what's the, the take on St. Francis now, two years removed from that? Uh, I'm sure... <laughs> Nobody still wants to play him, but uh, how, how easy is it to schedule a St. Francis? Well, it's get you know I, I I again that that when that happened when that when the MIAA teams dropped them the first call uh, Coach Russell and Poggi made was to yours truly and I literally you know I, I say I do this maybe two three hours a day for them it was a full time job for about a week it was eight hours a day for a full week yeah. and, and we got it done you know we called up a couple of Canadian schools. You know, we, we, we're, we're, there's a, well, there's a way we got it done since then. Um, it's gotten a little easier. You know, the, a lot of the other, um, power privates have stepped up and they, and they do realize that if, um, they want, they do want to be considered for a mythical national championship, they have to play and they have to beat St. Francis. So those that are interested in a, uh, a national championship knows, you know, I gotta, if I, if I, if, if I want to uh, be the man, I, I got to beat the man. Yeah. So, uh, so more of the privates are stepping up. You know, teams like St. Francis, uh, um, the other power, uh, St. John's, IMG, in a perfect world, in my opinion, their entire schedule should be comprised of other privates. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but, but there are teams out there, like I said, Centennial, remember Venice last year stepped up and said, you know, we want IMG. So, I mean, I, look, Hoover played IMG back to back. So there is, I love, I love the power private privates who want to test them, uh, power publics that want to test themselves, but they're, they're just few and far between of them. So it's where we come in and uh, a perfect example, the, the new school that just opened up in Alabama, USA Academy, um, you know, uh, within a couple of weeks, we, we uh, created a schedule for them made up of 10 all privates. It, you know, it was, you know, it was, it, it was easy because, other other privates have the same mindsets. All the privates have the same mindsets. Um, you know, they 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 share a lot of the same needs, uh, desires, right. and expectations. Yeah, they so sh- private same private problems, same easier. problems for all of them. Yeah. Right. Right. So. Um, and I was going to yeah, ask so you about that. That's that, yeah. that's an interesting program. I know you were on a podcast. I listened to it the other day uh, for USA Academy for people around the country that don't know about it. I did post the schedule uh, based in Alabama. Uh, Rush Propes, the uh, the man behind uh, two a days on MTV at Hoover, and then uh, state championship coach at Colquitt. Um, tell me a little bit about that. I mean, are they trying to become uh, the IMG of Alabama, if you will? Yeah, I mean, it, it appears like that. Not totally. I mean, remember, the school was started because there's a lot of homeschool kids down in that region of America. Mm-hmm. And, and those kids didn't have a quality uh, place to play high school football. So the, the founder said, you know what, there's a, there's a lot of these homeschool kids that around, out in, around the, the uh, rural Alabama area. Who want who want to play high end football, but because they're being homeschooled, they don't have the opportunity. So he kind of blended the two together. Um, had a, a plot of, of the land, the family land, hundreds of acres, and uh, they're in the process of of you know building something big down there. Um, could it could it be the next IMG? I don't think so. I mean, if, if you, IMG has a you know a, a forty <laughs> big 40, budget fifty year head, head start on them with big budgets and and huge facilities and, you know, uh, uh, things that they'll never have. But you know what, for that region, for that area, uh, and it's also, you know, we're talking going to school for, you know, 20 grand versus 60. So it, it's, it's, it's more affordable too. So yeah, it's going to um, be interesting to yeah, see. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I, I know there, I know, um, 
there's a lot of kids from the region interested in, uh, in learning more. I know they're getting inquiries every day from the people I've spoken to down there. You know, the schedule that we put together is obviously one of their selling points. Uh, it probably will be, you saw it, mm-hmm. there probably won't be a, a tougher high school football schedule in America next year. Uh, so let, let's see what happens. Uh, I'm rooting for them. You know, I, I, uh, I'm all, you know I, I like the disruptor types, uh, and they certainly are that. And uh, I, I wish them the best, and, and we're here for them to help them out in any way we can. Yeah, and as, as it relates to IMG, we'll find out. Last game of the season, those two are going to go head-to-head. Joe from Prep Gridiron Logistics got a couple more questions. We appreciate your time here. Um, you, you, and we're going to go to – you mentioned St. John's. You haven't mentioned much about the, the WCAC, the Washington Catholic Athletic Conference. That's another league. First off, it's a grinder, right? you got to play each other twice, basically, regular season and then the postseason. But uh, those are some guys, too, that have some troubles uh, finding games. you got any good ones there that you can, you can make reference to at this point? Yeah, I sure do. Um, I have a uh, good counsel traveling to St. Joe's Regional, who I know you're very yep. familiar with. Yep, new coach, too. Right. Um, uh, we ha- St. John's, you know, is, is playing IMG. They're playing Milton, Georgia. They're hosting Milton, Georgia. Milton, I love down in Georgia. They'll play anybody. Lo- love Coach Clack. Coach Clack um, is a class he, act. He sure is. Sure is. He he calls me every year. Him and an, another uh, young head coach down there, uh, Coach Helmerick from uh, Johns Creek. Mm-hmm. They call me every year, and their goal is to test themselves by playing the best out of state team they could find. And and that's and that's what they do. So I mean, we can get into Georgia a little later, but uh, you know, St. St. John's um, is is going to play IMG. They're playing Milton. Um, I don't have uh, Life Christian Academy, a, a, a rising school out of, out of the um, Richmond, Virginia area. So yeah, I mean, you have it. You know, everybody last year remembers the first six games that they scheduled. It, you know, at that time, it was the toughest out of state yep. uh, schedule probably in the history of high school football. Um, uh, the AD is left. He's not there anymore. He actually went on to IMG. Um, so uh, don't. You know, St. John is not going to have the out-of-state schedule that they had last year, but it's going to be formidable when you see it. Yeah. Trust me. And they've got some change at the top there, too, with uh, Coach Casamento uh, stepping down, but uh, no no loss there. They're bringing in an assistant. Uh, talking to Joe uh, from uh, Prep Gridiron Logistics. Check him out. Uh, you mentioned the website. We'll get that in before we end it here. Uh, let's let's go to Georgia before I go to Jersey. Tell me, tell me about Georgia because the Miltons, a, a good public up and coming, likes to try themselves, and South Georgia has trouble scheduling. So what do you have Georgia-wise? Yeah, well, well, we have we have Milton um, going to St. John's in D.C. and hosting Life Christian. Um, I have Johns Creek coming up north to New Jersey, playing Don Bosco Prep. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, as as far as Georgia goes, those, those are the the the, the highest uh, ranked games, in my opinion, as far as travel goes. Yeah. And when I'm talking travel, I'm not talking non-bordering states. Yeah. There's a lot of great games where Florida's playing Georgia, but for the sake of this conversation, we're sticking with, you know, uh, games where you have to travel, you know, 500 miles, 1,000 miles or more. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, Mar- 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 Marietta and Grayson, teams over the last couple of years ha- have really stepped it up, and it's, I'm happy to see that the, the smaller publics like Johns Creek – and uh, Milton are, are starting to do the same thing. I mean, uh, they, they'll play anybody. I'm telling you, it, there's, there's no, you know, I, I could bring up any, you know, IMG USA, St. Thomas Aquinas. They, 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 they don't care. Bring, bring it on. I love those attitudes. Yeah, no, and and so do I. I mean, it's it's the way the game has to go. Um, let me take you. We didn't you haven't really you, you mentioned De La Salle at the top going to Texas. You, you you got those two behemoths, and really the Trinity League in general has trouble scheduling, just like the people in New Jersey and Washington D.C., Baltimore, and that have trouble. But modern day St. John, and I know I, I I spoke to Coach Negro a little while ago. He gave me a little whisper in the ear about something he's doing, but I we can't announce that. But my my point is, do we have any uh, games out there between? the uh what i say were the one and two teams i know the saint thomas aquinas people are going to get all over me but the algorithm said they were one two uh what do you got for bosco and modern day anything announceable yeah well every, uh we're working last year uh prep grid island logistics along with the trinity league held the inaugural trinity league versus the usa event mm-hmm. uh it was a triple header last year 
where we brought um, uh, Milton, played Jay Sarah, uh, Matter Day, uh, played St. Francis, and St. John Bosco played Good Counsel. That, that was, that was a, uh, an event co-produced by yours truly and uh, Coach Negro. Um, this year, we're doing it again. It's going to be four games uh, starting on Thursday night. Um, the, the, the teams that are involved right now, uh, I can't tell you who's playing who, but I can tell you the, the visiting teams at this point right now are looking like they're going to be Liberty, Arizona, uh, St. Louis from Hawaii, and Deerfield Beach from Florida. Uh, I'm, I'm still waiting on one school uh, to be the fourth. I'm hoping I invited Orem, Utah, so I'm hoping they take advantage of the opportunity. So uh, uh, those four teams will be playing the likes of Bosco, Matter Day, Servite, and Jay Sarah. Nice, and Servite's program is is coming up there. Uh, I said two questions, but you're giving me so much information. You're making me – I've become a fan as I talk to you at this point. <laughs> and hear all of these, and I know you're going to hit me with some of the confirmed ones that we can add to our schedule that we have up at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. But but you, you mentioned two teams there, and it goes back to what you said about the publics that aren't afraid, Deerfield Beach and Liberty. Those are two publics that they don't care, right? There are those guys no, – They don't at all. I love – Love working with them. It's an easy, you know, it's easier when when you're dealing with clients like that versus those that have a a checklist of um, criteria and or excuses. So, uh, yeah, we we help everybody. Um, The goal is for us to, my goal is to create the biggest, best, most high-profile high school out-of-state games every year. You know, sometimes we can't do that. Sometimes I need two two bordering state height publics to play each other, you know, 400 miles apart. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. Our goal is to make everybody happy yeah. and to have them go away a satisfied customer. So, but, but we started this company and, and our main goal will always be to create the highest profile games possible when it comes to out-of-state matchups. Okay. And I, now, now I'm down to the final two. Uh, one, I'm going to take, uh, I, and I don't even know if you and I talked about this, but uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Wright's first year at IMG, and, and I know his dad um, for, from the days back in Indiana, he and I talked about the only kind of future, if you will, for, for the privates, or IMG we were speaking specifically about uh, before you came along, is to somehow form an alliance. And I know it's out there. I know it's kind of off the record, and there's only a few things we all can say about it. But what are your thoughts on all of these major privates around the nation some way coming together to make things easier on the schedule for all? Yeah, well, I'm a proponent, obviously. I, uh, Pete Prep Line Logistics is the official scheduler for that alliance you're talking about right now. So we're in the middle of year one, and the goal is right now there's there's about 15 privates from 11 states. It's basically a co-op where uh, when the scheduling process starts, we all look at each other's schedule first uh, to, to play each other. That's how St. Joe's got together with Good Counsel. They're both in the alliance. So, you know, b- before they went and looked at any other out-of-state games, the goal is for all the alliance teams to be considered first. Right. And then what, then what, then whatever you have left after the fact, you know, you have go out and get games yourself or have PGL assist. So it's, it's a great, it's a great alliance right now. we got teams from the Midwest, Northeast, South, West. I mean, it, it, it's great. I, I, again, it's only year one. Um, uh, I'm glad that PGL is, you know, a corporate partner in the idea um, so, you know, we're hoping it works out. It'll definitely help those teams that are, that are involved that have a hard time scheduling. It'll definitely ease up those pressures, uh, by scheduling the other alliance teams. Yeah. And then on, on, on the back end, PGL will help, you know, with the others. Yeah, and 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 if I think I'm going to pull that podcast out and redo it on a throwback Thursday or something because I went to Kevin and I said, you know, really, ultimately, nobody's going to play you at some point, especially if you're boxed out. And I said, at some point, you're going to divide the nation into maybe four regions, and there's a national championship. And I I truly believe this is the the beginning of uh, that, maybe the, uh, the 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 part of that that uh, breaks us down to uh, something along those lines, which would be interesting. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap up with uh, go into your your neck of the woods. Uh, Prep Gridiron Logistics all began to help the uh, teams in northern New Jersey there. Um, what, do you, what do you got? You mentioned Bosco and, and, and Johns Creek. Uh, you mentioned Good Counsel St. Joe's. I don't know if you mentioned Bergen Catholic's got a, got a little travel going. So what do you, what do you have? 
Yeah, let's go. We'll, we'll go with the big three. You know, Bosco's hosting John's uh, 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 John's Creek. Um, we got them going out to Archbishop Hoban, which will be a nice game. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, St. Joe's, we talked about, is taking on good counsel. Burden Catholic is going down to North Carolina to play uh, Charlotte Catholic. And those are the biggies. The other games involved, there's a, bunch, there's a lot of uh, New York, New Jersey stuff going on this year. Um, but those are the, the, the highlights of the big three from uh, the big, big North United. Yeah, and, and ironically, if you think about it, you know, you started this for that, and then the way the, the Super Conference has kind of come together, some of the scheduling headaches have been taken a little bit of care of, right, for, for the big three there. Uh, not, yeah. Not that yeah. it makes you less important. I'm just saying there have been things that have happened from the time you started this to help them, where ultimately they're, they're in better shape now than some of the other schools and leagues around the nation. You're, 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 you're absolutely right. You know, they, they got it figured out now. Um, it also helps that, you know, none of them are winning na- national championships like they were 10 years ago. <laughs> so so people, more people want to play. Yeah. Um, uh, so, but yeah, they're, they're fine. They, they call me when they need me. It, it hasn't been quite the problem. It was, you know, four or five years ago. And the same goes through with the WCACs. You know, my, my whenever I have an opportunity, um, the, the first teams I call up, uh, are, are the, 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 the Jersey power privates, I call up the, the WCACs and I, and I contact St. Joe's prep out of Philly. We're talking about the New Jersey turnpike. That's the I-95. Those teams yep. I-95, they're separated by a few hours. They should be playing each other each and every year. So whenever a big opportunity comes on my plate, um, you know, I, set, I send an email out to those three groups of schools because, you know, they're the closest. Um, a few of them are, are why this company was created and 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 I, I always start with those, and then I'll I'll, I'll go to uh, uh, outside the radius and and uh, contact other, others around the country. But so you know, they, they in a perfect world, the WCAC, the BNU, and St. Joe's Prep will, will will be playing each and every year, and and playing the other power privates like IMG, St. Francis, USA. <clears throat> in a perfect world, they all need each other. Yeah, you know, it, it, there's strength in numbers. So the more they, you know, coexist, play each other, value each other, the easier it's going to be scheduling down the road. Yeah, and it all comes down to money, too. Uh, Joe from Prep Gridiron Logistics on the line. We're going to wrap things up here a little bit. Um, I don't know if this is fair, but, you, you know, on, on your website, when I go on and, uh, you know, your sister website to kind of do the rankings, you, you know, I get jabbed a little bit. you got some tough guys on there, uh, speaking of Jersey. But anyway, long and the short of it is, you know, everybody has a, a, an opinion or two about who should be the mythical national champ. So I, I know a couple of years ago you weren't happy with me, so what about this past year? Were you were you okay with Bosco being number one, or were you an STA guy out of Florida? Yeah, I'm, I'm a purist. I'm a purist. So uh, obviously, these are all my clients. So I, you know, <laughs> you I gotta watch what you Jason say. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a I got a text from Jason Negro last week saying, "What the hell are you doing? What are you posting?" Um, but uh, now I'm a purist. I honestly feel that a, a mythical national championship in the world of high school football should be undefeated. That's just the way I feel. Um, what the good thing is, is that all the pollsters have told everybody around the world, hey, going forward, strength of schedule is more important than unblemished record. That's so now exactly we know. Right. Now we know. It's set. Uh, folks, so. jo- Joe spent about uh, two or three days trying to convince me after we put out our poll a couple of years ago <laughs> how wrong I was. It's uh, I guess we are still friends. It, it, now, we, hey, listen, we can you, take didn't, it. you didn't get I, Prep Force, Prep Nation also got those emails too, not just you. <laughs> so, you know, we, we try to do lobbying uh, uh, behind the scenes. But you know what? In the end, uh, in the end, the team with the better strength of schedule got it. So, like I said, it's 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 been etched in stone. The requirements, the criteria. So that's that's great for me because if somebody wants to win a, a mythical, mythical national championship, they now know you got to play the best teams possible, especially out of state. Yeah. So that no, that that don't, that only helps PGL's cause. <laughs> no, it does. It gets you the good work. And as I as I tell Joe, I always blame it on the computer, the algorithm, the numbers. You know, I'm not the opinion guy, so I'm just like Joe. Go talk to another wall. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Joe, I, I really appreciate your friendship. Uh, great work on what you do. Uh, let's go away here by letting people know how they can get in touch with you. Uh, we're not giving his last name, as I said at the top, but there is a way to get in touch with him. Uh, so give that to, to all the coaches listening out there. 
Yeah, uh, coaches out there, ADs, just go to the website, prepgridironlogistics.com. You could sign up for our newsletters. We send out scheduling alerts every other week, letting you know where games around the country are needed. Um, uh, also, you could you know, send, send us a note there, just a regular email, uh, or, or call us. There's a phone number on the website. Uh, for fans out there, fans of, passionate fans of high school football, we have a sister website that you should visit if you're passionate about your state and your high school football. That's prepgridiron.com. So between those two sites, we got you covered. We got the ADs and coaches covered on the one, and then we got the masses, the fans covered on the other. Yeah, and uh, if you don't have a thick skin as a fan and want to go on there and brag about Utah, it's just <laughs> – <laughs> they 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 will give you their opinion, no doubt about it. Well, Joe, uh, best of luck as you you go through the the end of this first quarter, which is your busiest quarter, and uh, just thanks for doing what you do and 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 putting together some great matchups for high school football fans around the country. Now, it's it's my pleasure. Thanks for this opportunity to join you on your podcast. Let's do it again soon. Sounds good. And if you want to see the latest list, growing list, I should add of the interstate games, out-of-state games, uh, go to highschoolfootballamerica.com, uh, prep Gridiron Logistics has a big hand in a lot of these, and I know there's a lot that will uh, have some contracts signed in the near future, so uh, go to highschoolfootballamerica.com. It's on the front page right now. Bookmark it. We will be adding to it on a regular basis. That'll do it for today. I'm Jeff Fisher, and you've been listening to the High School Football America podcast.